Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 52 of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. Today is March 9th, 2020. I am Bill, and I'm joined, as always, by my cataclysmic co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. <laughs> cataclysmic. I never thought that would be an adjective to describe me, but it feels really? good. Really? It fits. My children, <laughs> yes. Me, I don't know. You are... Your the, kids are more uh, like the Everstorm. They come every once in a while, <laughs> yeah. destroy they the crowd. They rush through, and then, then the mother of the to... cataclysm. Oh, man. Yeah. The mother well, no. of the avalanche. No, my friend's kids are those, but yeah, mine are bad. Uh, so, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome, guys. It's always great to, to be here. Now, before mm-hmm. we get started, we do want to remind you the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is not a spoiler free podcast, especially tonight. <laughs> That means that if there is something in the Cosmere you haven't read and are worried about hearing spoilers, you might want to go read those first, then come back and join the discussion. Because in tonight's episode, we're taking a look at something that has become a bit of a trademark of Brandon's work. The Brandon Avalanche, also called the Sanderson Avalanche or just the Sanderlanche. Most people who've read any of Brandon's books already know exactly what I mean. In case you don't, however... We're talking about the way pacing in Brandon's books often work, where he builds things up slowly over the course of the book, and then at the very end, he tugs on one crucial string, and the entire plot starts to tumble, and things start happening. Now, of course, that means we could end up talking about anything (laughs) Brandon has written to... uh, from the Cosmere to other series, and that means spoilers. So if you're worried about spoilers, again... Listen to us later, yeah. Like... We're not saying don't listen to us. Listen to us, but read the books first. Mm-hmm. And hey, we have a bunch of other episodes out as well that you, you could, you're happy to go or welcome to go listen to it anyway. And hey, if yes. you don't want to go read the books, still do this. Don't complain about spoilers afterwards. Because we right. said spoilers like seven times. Spoilers. Spoilers. For those of you who do listen to the podcast recordings or watch the videos on YouTube, we do want to remind you that it is possible for our listeners to interact with us live via chat as we record each episode at www.twitch.tv slash innkeepers table. We record episodes of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies every other Monday night starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. So please join us. Take an active part in the discussion. Just come and have fun. It's a blast. It's just, Yay. it's it's great, wonderful times. <laughs> now, yes. the center. Are Reason. we ready? Okay. I'm good. Go ahead. Awkward silence. Awesome. The Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is made possible by the support of our listeners and patrons. Our show will, of course, continue to be free. But if you want to help us out, you can head over to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. Even pledging a couple bucks each episode really helps us out as we work to improve the show. Patrons get immediate access to our Discord channel where you can talk about the show and the Cosmere with other listeners. It's a great community, and we have a lot of great discussions over there. You also get early access to bonus episodes, exclusive access to other bonus content, and other good stuff. Now, sometimes we uh, take some time to thank specific patrons this week. We don't have any new patrons this week to thank, but we do want to thank a lot of our current patrons who have rallied to push us over our (laughs) most recent stretch goal. They yep. basically want to put us to work. We yep. our, our latest stretch goal is that we are going to live stream and then we'll post a video of it later as well of us and possibly some friends playing a game of Mistborn House War. So you'll be able to get an idea of how the game works and, you know, we'll see how that goes. We've got to f- sort of do some figuring out of how to get everything laid out properly and stream it properly and record things so that it doesn't look horrible. But yes. we are... We have that in the works. So thank you to our current streamers who, you know, <laughs> just encouraged us to make that happen. We yep. we really appreciate that. All right. So the Brandon Avalanche. <laughs> I, I gave a, pr- a brief <laughs> overview of kind of what it is, but, you know, let's look a little deeper. I mean, like, how does this thing work? 
It's usually the last hundred pages. Sometimes it's more. But I think with, like, uh, Mistborn, well, it was, like, the last hundred-ish. Because, like, well, with Oathbringer, it's part five. Yeah. Of, of, <laughs> well, so you I'd can't say just say the his, last... Even his short stories have an avalanche that goes with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, in most of his stories, the aval- you can tell the avalanche happens when he starts jumping character perspectives multiple mm-hmm. times within a chapter. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind a of faster. a... And and he does that, I think, consciously because just jumping perspectives, it really just makes things feel faster. It's kind of like yeah. if you're watching a movie and they're doing quick camera cuts. Then you, you your heart rate goes up and you just get uh-huh. more, more excited and exhilarating and everything else. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's a great way to rack up tension because you rack up tension with one character and then at the height of the tension, you go to the next person and you don't mm-hmm. give... The, the cathartic moment mm-hmm. of the, the release, release yeah, that the... everyone's looking for because you're just going to the next thing. Mm-hmm. Um, El- Elantris, I think, even though it's my least favorite of the Cosmere books, I think it's actually the best example of the of, the av- of this in the Avalanche mm-hmm. because before the Avalanche, he's sticking to three characters per chapter and a specific order. Mm-hmm. And then when the Avalanche happens, there are no rules. It's, it's, it's prison rules now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Whoever needs yeah. to go, then they just they're seen as next, and it just go yeah. boom, boom, boom. Speaking of Elantris, that was my first you know experience of mm-hmm. that was the that was my first book that I read of Brandon's. What was what was it for y'all? I think mine was probably Elantris too. Mm-hmm. I mean, mine was First Empire or Final Empire. Uh, first Empire, first <laughs> Empire. is this is this a prequel we don't know about? <laughs> I have connections. You've been holding out on us, Jordan. Apparently, Man, can one can one learn this power? <laughs> Not from a Jedi. <laughs> um, so with me, I have a very clear memory of the very first time I experienced. And it actually literally felt like an avalanche to me. Mm. I remember in Elantris, particularly the scene where Rayadin is like running and he has that. He's dragging that stick behind him to draw the chasm line in the oh, giant. And then it yells Aeon. at him that he's a stick, and it gets really confusing. No, no, no. Different <laughs> stick. Maybe, maybe it isn't a different stick. What? Plots within plots. But no, like, I, I don't even remember if this is how it actually happens in the book, but I imagined him running downhill. Mm. And so I actually, like, when I say the Brandon Avalanche, in my mind, there is a literal avalanche because he's running downhill, pulling stuff behind him, and everything's falling, and just things are happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just like, I, I just remember the very first time I got to that point, I was a, a counselor at a youth camp and I just decided, you know, I'd read this book after the kids went to bed, uh, you know, each, each night. And then the like next to last night, I hit a certain point. I was like, Oh, Oh, I can't <laughs> stop. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> and that's, uh, interesting that it ties so well the first time we lived with each other but anyway um the uh yeah that one's it's it's a really good example of the avalanche Uh just in that concept uh for me with final empire i think the out i don't know when you would say it would technically start because i feel like as soon as uh as soon as uh Renew is captured. We find out it's captured. Mm-hmm. That's when the avalanche starts. Yeah, I feel like mm-hmm. Fountain Square is kind of the beginning of the avalanche. Yeah, because there, it, it, there it is feels a bit a of a slower lull. build. Well, because there is a lull mm-hmm. right after Kelsier dies. Um, it's mm-hmm. it almost makes me think of like in Mulan when like she shoots Once the rocket. Once again, and... spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but like when Mulan shoots like the Disney animated one, she shoots the rocket into the mountain, and it's like there's something big, and then nothing, and then. Then it starts uh-huh. to just all slide down. So that's what it kind of makes me think of with yeah. with, with Mistborn. So that yeah. you, there is the building, but you don't see it until it just just goes mm-hmm. again. Well, it's, it's almost like a it's almost like a car that misfires with the Final Empire avalanche because mm-hmm. as soon as Renew's captured and Kelsier decides to jump down, it is jumping between Kelsier and Vin over and over again, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then it's like. Got to get them. Oh, no, soldiers. Oh, no, Kelsier. Oh, no, let's let's help soothe people. Oh, no, Inquisitor. Oh, no, let's, Inquisitor. Let's take a moment <laughs> oh, and look no at things from Ellen's perspective. Oh, no, Lord Ruler. Oh, no, <laughs> Kelsier's dead. And then it just stops for like a chapter because 
Kelsier is dead. Well, it's yeah. such a gut punch. Mm-hmm. I still remember when that happened because it happens at about a page turn, and I have to go back. Yeah, and just went back. I'm like, I skip a page. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, it was that sudden. Okay, he just He's killed just my favorite gonna... character. And I know there's and an entire r- two books right, right after at, this one. <laughs> right at his like awesomest moment. Too. Oh yeah. I mean, Jordan, you you wanted to dedicate you you did dedicate yeah, an did entire dedicate episode, episode to that to scene. Yes, yes. Yeah. So good. <laughs> But yeah, and so it's sort of like it starts off just, yeah. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Off again. laughs> oh gosh, it just it just immediately cuts. It's such whiplash. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but that, that's a good example of how he uses the the avalanche to give you that gut punch moment because I I think Oathbringer has a similar sort of stop and start to its avalanche. Cause it, like you said, it starts at part five and it goes the rest of the book. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. there are some lulls that occur when we get these small little moments of, of repose that are, you know, calms before the storms with the way Oathbringer goes sometimes literally. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just one of these things where by, in the middle of chaos, just providing this brief respite of quiet, it provides you with this feeling of anticipation of what is about to come next. Because you, you can feel it. You can feel that. Oh no, we're nowhere close to a resolution. But and I mean, mm-hmm. you only have to look at the book and see that there's that many pages still. And well, it's like think of a like in Oathbringer. Um, so Dalinar is like it's building up. You know, it, it's looking like uh, Renarin's about, you know, given up. It's look, you know, Adolin's about to die. So Navani's about to die. <laughs> Dalinar's about most. to fall. Renarin's about to get killed by his cousin. Meanwhile, in the cognitive realm, they're going to be trapped. Kaladin can't, stuck, get yeah. the, Kaladin can't get the next oath. Through. It's just, and you're just going mm-hmm. through. It's all horrible. And then he claps. And suddenly... <laughs> you know, they have the meeting of everyone where they game plan. Okay, what's next? Mm-hmm. But so there's this calm, and it's a glorious moment. Like the clap is amazing. Oh yes. But at the same time, it's like, all right, he clapped. I mean, there's still an entire I don't know army, two <laughs> chasm fiend signs, horrible things. You know, odium, literal odium, <laughs> right there. And you're just going <laughs> through, so you know it's like this feels like. In most other books, this is going to be the, this is the resolution. And it's like, no, <laughs> this is part one of like four. Mm-hmm. It just keeps going. It reminds me of... Uh, clap on, clap off. I think... <laughs> no, it reminds me of um, Super Metroid. You know, this is a, you know, 20 plus year old game, so I don't feel bad spoiling the ending of this one either. But uh, like right at the very end, you end up getting like blasted and pinned to the wall. And it's just like everything is over. You are about to die and you've run out of, of energy. And then the the Metroid comes and just gives you all this energy and you just start destroying everything around you. That's kind of the feeling is the game's not over yet, but suddenly you're overpowered and able to do this kind of stuff. And it just th- suddenly the score feels a lot more even. Hmm. And, you know, as soon as he claps, that's kind of what he does is he overcharges the field. Yeah. Um, but yeah, okay. So the interesting thing about the avalanche, though, is I remember several years ago um, reading, you know, he Brandon would post conversations and even or at Q&As, people would ask him about it. And he seemed to kind of be worried about the avalanche. You know, he thought it, that it was actually a shortcoming of his. Hmm. And because he, he said it marked a uh, a trouble with pacing because everything happens at the very end. He's like, well, what does that say about everything leading up to it? Um, not realizing that he's actually laying things out very, very well. And the pacing mm-hmm. is good before, but that avalanche, it's kind of one of the things I feel like people have started to come to him for. Like they yeah. want it. It's, it's not a shortcoming. It's, they come because it's so satisfying because every piece has been put in place beforehand Mm -hmm. and then he just tugs that one brick in the jenga tower and everything comes crashing down and it's just it's so satisfying 
Well, and it's it there, there's a there's a TV trope that they always talk about refers to a gargoyle's villain named Xanatos, where it's called the Zan. There's a Xanatos gambit, and then there's the thirty two Xanatos pileup, where everyone's gambits are coming together at the same time and creating chaos. Mm-hmm. I, of the ones that are gambit stacking up, I think Elantris is probably the best one because you have several people plotting against each other trying to execute their master plan at the exact same moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just what another way. It, like, that's the thing. Each avalanche, despite it being a Sandersonian trope, each one does feel different. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's very much each book is its own individual entity. It's not like it feels very Brandon, but it still feels very distinct. Mm hmm. Well, it's because early early on, a lot of the books, the avalanche was related to figuring out some quirk of the magic. Elantris with Mm -hmm. how to fix the rune. Mistborn with uh, Vin er, figuring out, oh, he's... How how to use the mists? Yeah, well, he's using Farukami and... uh, And... uh, Alamancy. Alamancy. Something blanked on the word. Together, and uh, there was one, I believe, what was it in... uh, I wasn't figuring out the quirk and the magic, but suddenly figuring out how Light Song was going to actually save uh, the day. Yeah, when that mm-hmm. that switched the pacing of everything, because then yeah. um, Susabron. Yeah, because we'll suddenly God things. Mode comes online. So that's yeah. the one that Literal I always God have <laughs> trouble remembering for some reason, the, the climax of Warbreaker. And somebody in chat recently mentioned that as the best. But can, can somebody review that for me? Like, just sort of where the avalanche goes in that one? I think the um, avalanche goes in that basically when the attack happens and suddenly they're trying to escape. Uh, yeah, not Siri uh, and Susabron. Not Vivina, what's the other one? Siri. Siri. Um, Siri is trying to escape and then they find out that the pawn call have betrayed them. And then yeah, blue fingers is a bad. lot of us are suddenly like, oh, wait, they were a different oh. people. Yeah, that yeah. one w- did have some trouble leading up to it, but still. Mm-hmm. I just was, but I mean, but, but it's, it seems like it, it it builds it builds kind of from there. Like that's when, and then what's going on with Vivenna about then? Because stuff's going on with Vivenna. Vivenna too. has to go get uh, Nightblood to Vash. Oh, that's right. She oh, she's right. gotten but, but she's trying to get they him to Vash. Captured Basher. him and they threw Nightblood Nightblood in the into the, of the water. Lake. And she and had to go find him. him and <laughs> Nightblood's like, I don't understand. I thought Vartrelides liked me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like of course nightblood yes everyone loves you you're perfect you're, as you're, you're wonderful. a good dog uh, good good eldritch puppy oh yeah but that and so but that one's just a cavalcade of what is going on because no one knows what's going on that's then, that's when it's that one seems more like all the pieces are getting put together compared to we're figuring out the magic it's more this person was lying about that and this is connected this way and it's just all that's how yeah. that one seems to f- feel more. Yeah. Well, right, well the, the, but when we get to the, like even the short stories, like looking at uh, six of Emperor's. the dusk or oh, Emperor's yeah. soul oh, as yeah. well. Oh, but even, soul, even, but... even something as short as six of the dusk has an avalanche when that, mm-hmm. when the, Oh, what were they called? Like the, Oh, the company, the, no, the, company? the stalker character. The, not character, but animals. Um, oh. oh, I imagine in my mind they're saber tooth tigers, but um, yeah, yeah, I can't remember what they're called. Like once, because they have to get, they figure out we have to get back to her company because they've turned on the device and it's horrible and mm-hmm. everything's going insane. And then you're not supposed to go through the the jungles at night. And they mm-hmm. have to do it anyway. Yeah, and they have to do it anyway. And it's just even that short story has an avalanche, and it's because it's been built up properly. That, like that's mm-hmm. the thing that Brandon does that allows him to have that avalanche is he puts all the pieces in place before well, it's very much he's like very, very dominoes. Very, he's very very good mm-hmm. at foreshadowing. He just puts all the the pieces in place and then finally <clears throat> pushes the the first piece down. Mm-hmm. And then, in short order, all that stuff that you've been taking all that careful time to set up comes crashing mm-hmm. around you. It's mm-hmm. the payoff. I mean, like if you've watched those videos of you know, enormous domino displays. And you look at it and you think these people have been working for hours, <laughs> if not days to, to set this up. And mm-hmm. this is the payoff. This is why, you know, he's been writing it. This is why we've been reading. Oh, um, so the, the animals are night moths. Night moths they, yes. They're large bird like predators, apparently, which in the, 
the drawing here they have in the copper mind, it looks sort of like a dinosaur lizard slash one of those giant birds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so. and this also gets to the problem of being a reader. You it doesn't matter if they describe it, you're still just going you, to go you, with you figure out how it's gonna of. look and it and you go with that, yeah. Yeah. No, um oh I just I had something Sorry. I was gonna say in my I, head and I, I, I lost it. Were we uh, Emperor Soul? No, it wasn't Emperor Soul. Um I it'll it'll come back, I think. With with Emperor Soul it felt like um that it was her setting in motion her plan to escape and then it was just like everything just moved because before that it was all set up like she had to figure out how to how to make the the template for his soul and everything else and so it was a lot of just prep and then once things moved it was well and and the emperor soul is a great example of because that's a book that happens almost entirely from her perspective until Mm -hmm. like the beginning and end with with gautona with Gautona. But uh, the way you know the avalanche happens in that book is she finally leaves the cell. Yep. Because mm-hmm. the setting finally changes for her. Yep. So um, I actually was having a conversation on Reddit about this. Somebody had posted, like they had just, like they had started reading uh, Way of Kings. Mm-hmm. And then... And they'd have re- a lot of trouble getting into it, and they left, and then went and read Mistborn, and then came back, and suddenly they didn't have any trouble getting into the Way of Kings, and they loved the characters, they loved the story, they loved the build-up. Brandon has said something about when it comes to the Way of Kings. He said, when you read the Way of Kings, you have to trust me. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is an enormous book. And it is the beginning of an enormous series. And because of that, it requires a lot of setup and a much slower buildup. He says, mm-hmm. but if you have learned to trust me, you'll recognize that I have a plan. I am going somewhere with this. And there is a reason for everything in here. And that's sort of the way the avalanche works. And I think that's one of the reasons that um, The Emperor's Soul is a great book to start people on. Because... It is a slow buildup, but it's short enough that that it's slow buildup isn't drawn out for too long. Mm-hmm. And you get that payoff and you start to recognize, OK, this is how it goes. When you when you go to Elantris, you get the same thing. When you go to Mistborn, you get the same thing. And you learn to trust Brandon that the payoff will come and it's going to be worth it. Glorious. Yeah, it's there, there's like for me, whenever I recommend the Cosmere, it's. The Emperor's Solar Final Empire are the books that mm-hmm. I recommend because mm-hmm. both do a good job of both showing how Brandon likes to do his magic and mm-hmm. how he likes to do mm-hmm. his uh, his you know the build up to his build up and his yeah. character development. Whereas Elantris, mm-hmm. it's the, it, Elantris is almost in some ways I think a uh, a bit of an experiment for Brandon with the just I'm going to go through these three characters in order. Oh, he and he, and he has blatantly said that. Yeah, that it was an experiment to to do it in that order, and he in his mind he it's sort of a failed experiment. I personally disagree. I actually think it it works particularly when you hit the avalanche because you set that expectation, mm-hmm. and that and then you set it up to where you can break it. And when you break it, the the listener or the reader knows something's happening. The only yeah. problem with the experiment is if you, if there's one character you don't like, which that you was hate. the case for me. Is. Then you dread that scene. Yeah, you're just like, oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. Siri's but, gonna hum at someone. Or if there's a character you really like and it ends, you know you've got two chapters before yeah. you're coming back to them. Before you come back to them, you're like, but I want to know what happens with that person, not with mm-hmm. the other <laughs> ones. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's so funny. So many people I know hated Wraith's chapters. I didn't. I, I wasn't fond of them at first. In retrospect and going back upon and multiple he's, rereads. He's grown on me. I think, I, I think. Yes. Yeah. I think Jordan's love of him kind of made me go, okay, I'll give him more of a, more of a and, chance. And, but th- I think mm-hmm. this is also the result of reading Final Empire before Elantris where mm. I, A, I, I just could immediately smell he's, he's the important character. <laughs> like, <laughs> o- obviously the other two are important to the plot. 
But he's it just I just could feel this is guy is important. He's, he's the linchpin for when when something happens with him. It's he gonna... still just has that line and nothing I do is for show. See, see, and I thought he was <laughs> I thought he was just there for show. But apparently, I mean, nothing, nope. nothing he does is for show. Hmm. But yeah. Oh, great. Um, OK, so I want us to each go through and just kind of dissect our favorite brandon avalanche oh no so, i have to pick one. Oh, or so, a favorite so i was gonna start with you amy but we'll let Jordan no no give off. me a minute <laughs> so there's there's so the the best written one i still think is Oathbringer. like but it's not mm. my favorite i do think it's just the best brandon has ever written something so technically good my favorite is uh unsurprisingly secret history but mostly because we were talking about how things are way different with each avalanche. Secret history is the most unique of the avalanches because we kind of know what's going to happen. You know, we we've read Hero of Ages. We know that eventually Marsh is going to pull out the the earring. We know Vin's going to take up the power. We know they're going to save the day. But it's sort of like a magic eye picture where you you're shown what it's supposed to be, but you can't see it. And then finally when Kelsier slams into ruin and, you know, just has that moment of, of, do you know why I was always good at card tricks? Cause I could always get people to pick the card I wanted. And then that moment of realization from ruin of, Oh no. <laughs> oh no. And uh, then just you that picked line, the wrong brother. Yeah, you picked the wrong brother to be inquisitor. Marsh always had the nasty habit of doing what was right instead of what was smart mm. and just it's so because even though you know what's going to happen it's suddenly you're seeing how all these pieces that were happening in the background suddenly come together at this one magical moment to and then well and then you know he says the line to vin that vin sort of heard in her own mind and didn't know you know no one knew it was coming from kelsier the entire time and it's just this beautiful thing. You finally get to see. It's sort of like seeing a magic trick when you finally know how the trick is done. And you're just uh -huh. like, oh, that's good. <laughs> that's clever. And Or so, when you don't know how the trick is. Oh, no, for this perspective, yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. And so it was so interesting. So th for me, that was my favorite. It's just because it was so unique relative to the rest of them. And it involved Kelsier, which, you know, we've, we've been here before. It's your right. soft spot. Right, right. All right, Amy, do you know yours yet? I can't I can't pick like one that is just like my favorite cuz I it's like picking a so favorite pick, child so, which is hard. So I I'm still talking. A favorite. So this is the one that I'm I'm wanting to talk about is um, seriously, Edgy you have to pick your favorite child by the end of the stream too. I can't say that or else they'll listen to this and then kill me later when they're bigger. <laughs> so I can't I can't say that. Um <clears throat> anyway, but so with Edge Dance, I had to look it up again, but I remembered like Lyft doesn't get as much screen time as other people. Mm -hmm. um, and she's always, she's just really fun. And like, I, I just have a soft spot for like the spunky kid characters. Mm -hmm. um, and with hers, it's, it's not as, it doesn't feel as long for remember. I mean, it's a novella. So like the story is shorter, um, but it seems like with hers, it's putting together a lot of the little hints and pieces of what Nail is trying to do and what's going on with the stump, who is the lady who has all of the, um, the orphans. And then just finding out all these details about Lyft that she's been denying around anybody else. Um, and so, I mean, in that one, a lot of the, the avalanche happens with the Everstorm hitting, like right before it hits, I think is when it just starts to really move. And I mean, you have a literal Everstorm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so yeah, so, I mean that. I think that's that's the one that I'd pick right now to be my favorite, even though they're that's all wonderful. I forget about ones actually. That's a good one. That's a really that good it's one. that the Everstorm like is right there with it, and so it's a big well, and then it, thing. And then it leads to that confrontation between her and uh, and, and she Nail hugs it out. The, the tower yeah. of friendship. <laughs> yeah. <well. laughs> Which is funny. Like you don't see that too much in in Sanders and stuff compared to like oh, my gosh. my children had a My Little Pony phase, so there was power of friendship right and left <laughs> um but so so yeah i mean it's, it's just kind of interesting that it's it's not that she goes and beats the big bad it's that she gets him to to have a heart 
kind of, and realize that you can't just keep going around killing people. It's and not okay. it breaks him. I know. So that actually segues into mine pretty well, because mine Ooh. happens at the exact same time as yours. I did it totally intentional right there, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My, my favorite is we uh, w- Words of Radiance, <laughs> but just because, mm-hmm. I mean... The, the storm builds and just, you know, everything's building up and it's just been building to this moment. And Kaladin is facing things. He says the words. And then Dalinar gets sent into the sky and Thunderstruck just starts racing, you know, just going through my mind. <laughs> yes, I have soundtracks to, for all these songs. So uh, or for all these scenes, but just everything builds and again you've been we've been waiting for this scene for two books Mm -hmm. because it's you know everybody knew that we we see zeth running around and doing all of the things that we gradually see kaladin learning to do and so this has been building in every scene that we have with zeth up to this point but zeth has it through an artificial means and kaladin comes by it naturally he's you know it's like mm-hmm. you know you think the darkness is your ally i was born to it and <laughs> you know to the point where you know uh he you know bring comes down saving dalinar's life sets him aside and he says the skies are mine i claim them as i now claim your life you know yeah. it's just sort of like this is my house mm-hmm. and uh suddenly we see this clash that's been building up because just ever since we see Kaladin showing the slightest hints of becoming a wind runner, Mm -hmm. we've wanted to see this clash between him and Zeth. We get a brief look at it. um, When Zeth comes to attack Dalinar, but this is where it's just like, okay, both of them, no holds barred, just, you know, Final Going destination, no items, and just, you know, go through skill against skill alone, just beat down. Mm-hmm. And it's everything we want it to be. <laughs> well, then it becomes more because then the two storms hit each other mm-hmm. and it starts turning into, what is it? Uh, Prince of Persia. Prince of three? Persia. Prince of Persia 3, <laughs> yeah. The, the, I, the two kings. I don't remember what it's I, called. All I know was I had pretty recently finished. Mm-hmm. Words of Radiance when you uh-huh. were playing that game, and I happened to come <laughs> up right when he starts having to do all these tricks on platformers that are being thrown around by like a tornado or something. And I'm just like, I'm yep. sorry, is this the the concept for the? It was like, did, the did they actually make the game, game already? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, it's just again, and that's the thing is the two storms hit, and mm-hmm. it's it's like uh, that scene in. Um, I think it's the two towers where you see the two armies just charging towards each other oh. and it's just this dramatic, dramatic and then suddenly it hits and everything breaks loose. Mm-hmm. And, I need to rewatch those. It's been a while. Uh, I do too. Actually, but that's I have, gonna, uh, it's that's going to be my birthday. Uh, that's what I'm doing for my birthday this year is I'm doing a marathon of all three <laughs> expended editions. It's going to be a day. It's gonna I be can't awesome. believe they left out Tom Bombadil. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! So it's full just, disclosure, so I didn't read the, the, the books. I only watched the films, and all I heard was from all the hardcore people. Oh, Tom Bombadil, Tom Bombadil, and I'm just like, what's a Tom Bombadil? <laughs> what? What? Um, okay, so what about outside the Cosmere, like in in other Brandon books? Other Brandon books. Okay, let's see. I have that actually pulled up. So I remember in in the Reckoners, uh-huh. Steelheart was the one. Well, they were all pretty good. I think I like Steelheart and Firefight's endings the, more than Calamities. The one in Firefight is the one that really stands out to me, where mm-hmm. he's like jetting along on that with that water based jetpack thing. Yeah. And then. And the water's rising up and tentacles are slapping at him and. Mm-hmm. I don't remember much of it, but I just remember that. That image. that one had that had like lots of tension, and I remember like the moment where you you finally figure out how Steelheart's actually going to die. Like that, I just remember being like, <gasps> it just, it gripped me. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Reckoners was the the Steelheart one. I like the Reckoners, but I do think Steelheart is the best of the three, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Calamity, like I, I didn't 
Calamity just didn't mesh as well for me, like the character. But I wonder, I mean, I wonder it, if once we get the uh, the Apocalypse Guard, if we ever do, it, it, yeah. which we may. I mean, it's still in works. He's still working on. Like they talked about it a bit at uh, at LTUE even. Yeah, I watched that. Sometimes. And uh, you know, I wonder if we ever get that. If that'll help improve or hurt yeah. Calamity. I don't yeah. know, but. Th- the Steelheart one's so good because they've slowly been taking out all his lieutenants and every single mm-hmm. one of them is like this Metal Gear solid like puzzle where you have mm-hmm. to figure out, okay, I have to turn that camera this way, which then lets me go here, which lets me flip the switch there. And then yeah. mm-hmm. slowly but surely you can finally take them out. And with Steelheart, when the battle starts, they still don't know what what, what they're going to do. Yeah. And they, right. they're trying all sorts of things and, like, down to the one that I thought it was, which was, you can't, like, he's immune to anyone trying to kill him. And so they mm. tried to get bullets to hit him in a crossfire. Mm. And even that didn't work. And I'm like, dang it, I thought that was the one. <laughs> yeah, and it was, wasn't it that he he got, well, he, can't, he pulled the, tr- he pulled the yeah. trigger on the gun. Well, it's because so he, he can't was, be killed by, any by, anyone, any, anybody by who's anyone who him. doesn't fear him. And he doesn't fear himself. And so, yeah. right. So he pulled the trigger. So yeah, yeah, which is the reason his father was able father, to damage him back in the day was because he had confidence that he would save him, and so he wasn't afraid mm-hmm. of him. He was, yeah, you know, and he yeah. he like nicked him or something like that. Yeah, is and what that's why was. he has the scar. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's been awesome. And, awesome and that, so but. it's, it, but it's it's this great little. It's it's almost in some ways it's it's almost a mystery novel. Mm-hmm. Where you're mm-hmm. trying to figure With superheroes. out superheroes, yeah, why this is oh, happening, yeah. and then finally they resolve it. And it's mm-hmm. just, it's really cool. And then it happens in Soldier Field, which the, the football nut just loves that this is where the final fights occur. <laughs> yeah. So, of course. No, it's it's really good. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, uh, the Skyward I books. I haven't both... seen Scarsight yet. Okay. I'm, I finally but... bought it, so I'm going to read it soon. So don't say the thing for that yet. But but Skyward itself, you know, that's a pretty epic um, mm-hmm. avalanche going on with just all the fights and just yeah yeah and she figures out exactly what's going on, Went with, on her, with all of that yeah with her brain mm-hmm. stuff but yeah it's just ah uh, it's and i just i love it it's very very some somebody said it in uh, in chat they're not formulaic at all but they're very very signature brandon mm-hmm. yeah and yeah. it's just, it's one of the most satisfying, what, like, Brandon, if Brandon only does one thing well, it's hard to decide whether it's just endings in general or magic systems. Because mm. the magic systems are awesome, but the endings are just what make me, keep me coming back. I, yeah. I think at this point, it's the endings. I think earlier it was the magic systems. But um, mm. at this point, because, like, think about it. What, in Oathbringer, which, again, I, I think is his best ending so far. Um, which builds well for the future, but um, the uh, what did we learn about the magic systems at the end of that book that we didn't already know? We, we learned that Gliss was corrupted. Yeah, but we yeah. don't know how or anything or right. how it affects things. We don't really we know started picking how stuff Dalinar up. did the clap. Right. We, we have no yeah. explanation. Not, not even the Stormfather understands how he did it. So the characters again, in the book don't know. But again, at this point... We trust Brandon. Yeah. Because we still don't know. But we trust that we will. Like, that's, yeah. the, that's the cool thing that Brandon does with, uh, with just his pacing. Is that he, he trains his readers to, to figure out, okay, it's worth, you know, it'll be worth it in the end. Just, just, mm-hmm. just hold, hold out. On. Don't ask. You know, you know, it's one of those, if you're watching a show with somebody and, 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 uh, somebody leans over and says, okay, so how did, how did you do that? It's like, we don't know yet. Or Just if somebody wait. else, if you have a friend who's reading a book and they come and they say, well, how did you do that? And what is Brandon's constant response? Raffo. Read and find out. Oh my goodness. Why? Because things are revealed in a specific order at a specific time for a very pos- you know, strong reason. Think, you know, th- there's an order to reveals that gives the best payoff. Well, and that's what's interesting about his writing at this point is he can do a completely unexplained that 
again, the clap, no clue how he did it. Mm -hmm. But he is able to just throw together, like, did I haven't heard one person ever complain. And it's like, well, then Brandon just deus ex machina the clap out of nowhere. <laughs> and no, no one's complained about it because we didn't really care because we had seen what Dalinar had gone through. And mm -hmm. just the part of readers where we sort of go through that whole did they earn it, didn't they earn it type of thing. Mm -hmm. We know he's earned it. And so even if we don't know how he did it, because mm -hmm. he's made a magic system that's tied to oaths and understanding it, we just know... And he's, an, he's, and he's a bondsmith. Yeah, yeah. he's ready. He, like, he's clearly emotionally ready for whatever the next level is. This is the next level. How does the power work? Uh, we'll find because... out later. I don't know. We don't, we don't know yet. <laughs> but it's okay, because he earned it, and it's fine. Yeah, and that was the thing. Is And that's where Brandon's so good at it. He makes sure that everything basically feels earned in all his books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, this is why I feel like Brandon was the best person to finish the wheel of time because there had been so much buildup and so much promised in those books that you needed somebody who knew how to do an ending. And, you know, Brandon had loved those books for so long. And so what does he do? He writes the avalanche for mm -hmm. his favorite series and then it's split into three so that avalanche has its own avalanche and then of course there's that 150 you know i've, I've talked about this ad nauseum it's much like but, pattern where it's just tessellating pa patterns it's all a, the way down it's a fractal it's a fractal <laughs> it's a fractal avalanche <laughs> that'd be a really good screen name hmm. but it's yeah i just i love it I love it so much. And it's so funny story about avalanches. Actually, this weekend I went to SaltCon, which mm -hmm. is a, a board game convention. And I was there with a bunch of friends. Mm -hmm. One of my friends, Diesel Martini in the discord, um, he was rereading uh, Words of Radiance. And I, you know, we were we were at the Airbnb and I came out and I, I just said, hey, so what's up? He just said avalanche. And it just sort of. Not and I said, I'll leave you to it. And I turned around, but that's all he needed to say was avalanche. And I knew exactly what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, it's like the picture that you posted, Amy. <laughs> yeah, where, so if for anybody who hasn't seen the social media there, I can't remember the exact words. So if I get it wrong, but there, there's a lady and she's wearing like colonial clothing or 1800s or something like that. And she's got her hand holding her face and she just looks super annoyed. And she's holding a book with her other hand. And it says, when you just want to read, but your family won't shut up or something to that effect or won't stop mm -hmm. talking. And, and yeah, that, that's that been me a lot with my five-year-old who's like, so mom, 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 mom. Like he starts like every sentence to me with mom. <laughs> Which is, uh, oh my goodness. This drives you crazy. Um, it but I figured it fit with the avalanche. So no, it, yeah. ha it happens here with Bill as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where Bill will be like finish. I think it I'm trying. I think it was one of the. I want to say it was one of the Wax and Wayne books. I, th I think. I think it was. Uh, I think it was Bands of Mourning. Okay, mm. and all I know is like which I of the Wax up, and Wayne books has the most avalanche? -y oh yeah. Avalanche. So I, I come out and I was like, "Hey, Bill!" And it's not just a avalanche. There's a hand motion that goes with it. It's a very shooing hand motion. I mean, avalanche. <laughs> That's right. Just just sort of flapping my hands. It's, it's, it's avalanche. A, Go it's away. A desperate desperate plea to you just i need you to not be here right now <laughs> whereas i'm yeah. i'm curled up on a corner of my couch or a chair and my knees are up and i've got the book and i'm just i'm there and i don't usually try and read anywhere towards the end of a sanderson book unless my children are asleep because otherwise it's going to be like Shh, go away you're yeah. you're disowned go away i'm busy and for me with i mostly do the audiobooks um mm -hmm. because i i'm bad at physically reading i don't know mm -hmm. what you book reader people do to get into a comfortable <laughs> position to read because I have I have not found it in 35 years of existence. There has not been a comfortable way to you, read. You have to move through different positions. To yes, will, there are several there. positions. It's a rotation. Yes. Ugh, I, and I can't master that. It just doesn't work. But the physical reading I did do was for uh, the original Mistborn trilogy. Uh -huh. um, I did that one. And that one was funny because... Bill had given me uh, Mistborn to read and did, and so over... And I enjoyed Final Empire a lot. It's 
one of my favorites of all time. But I knew the next ones, like, oh, I don't know if they can live up to it. I don't know, Kelsey is not in there. He's my favorite. And so it took me a bit. So I went home on Christmas vacation, and I just brought uh, Well of Ascension. And one night, like, I hit the avalanche, and it was, you know, stay up till 3 a.m. to finish it, because mm-hmm. got to. And the thing is, I finished it. There was still, like, a week and a half left for my vacation. <laughs> and I'm just like, I cannot wait a week and a half to figure out what the crap is coming now. <laughs> what did they well, release? I mean, and so I was well, like, the... the next day, even though I'd been up till 3 a.m., the next day, first thing in the morning, I'm going to Barnes & Noble. <laughs> like, I just buy this. <laughs> oh, man. I remember reading uh, Hero of Ages, and like I, I was up until like 3 in the morning, and I just read through that just epic avalanche of avalanches. Where mm-hmm. everything, I mean, you know, the earring and, you know, ruin, just everything is going down and happening. And I finished and it was three in the morning. And, you know, normally it's three in the morning. You're just like, okay, fine. I got to go to bed. And I was just like, I can't go to bed. Right, I got up, up and I, and I ran, <laughs> I ran over to the computer and I just start looking up. Mistborn theories. That's how I first found the Time Wasters <laughs> Guide, which is for those who aren't aware, Brandon's old fan forum site that he and a few other authors had had created, and a lot of that has kind of evolved into the Seventeenth Shard, I believe. Uh, a lot of the original words of Brandon come from his posts on mm-hmm. uh, the Time Wasters Guide, where his screen name was E U O L, which stands for Evil Undead Overlord. <laughs> because that was the screen name Brandon chose for himself. You know, now it's you Mistborn, but, mm-hmm. but, uh, but yeah, I was just sitting there searching and that's when I came across the conversation where somebody said the word Hoyd mm. and I have never looked back. <laughs> <laughs> the, that's uh, why I am here tonight. <laughs> av- avalanches are weird in audiobook form. But so uh-huh. for me, the re- I had to do audiobook back when I worked my my day job because mm-hmm. I had no other way I was going to get through these books and stream and do all my other stuff. And so I'd do it. It was a data entry job, so it was somewhat mindless. But when the avalanche would hit, my productivity suffered. <laughs> <laughs> but so I was like, so with Oathbringer, I'm squeezing it in everywhere I can get it. And so like I would also listen to it while I was. Uh, Like, in bed, trying to go to bed, because if I fell asleep, I would just then rewind until I remembered Mm -hmm. where it was the next day. Mm -hmm. But I made the mistake. It was right before bedtime, and Dalinar is, you know, in the vision, and he's talking to Gox, and then leaves, and he's like, oh, dear. And then all of a sudden, you know, Divinity comes and speaks to him. He's like, oh, and he's like, honor? He's like, no, I'm the other one. And I'm suddenly, like, in bed, I'm all of a sudden sitting up. No. No. <laughs> I'm Odia. <laughs> no. And, like, it ends there. And it's the same thing. It's like, I'm supposed to be going to bed. Mm. And inside, I'm just like, God. Ah, ah. <laughs> I can't sleep. I can't sleep. Uh, that's the fun thing about the avalanche is when other people, like, I almost feel like we should have had, like, you know, significant others or other people in our families come on the show <laughs> and just explain their perspective of us going through the avalanche. Yeah, um, my, I think my husband can tell because housework doesn't get done. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, think, man. I think when Rhythm of War comes out, I'm just going to be like, okay, the house gets cleaned like before it comes out and then nothing else happens. We, and, we have uh-huh. an extra bedroom if you just need to crash here and just No, leave but the then children my children will themselves. go feral. We, my we children don't will have an feral. extra bedroom. No. no. We will. <laughs> I have no idea where you're going with that. This it is the oddest thread I've ever so made, ways. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of. Um, anyway, but... Uh, but yeah, because like, because for me, I think my biggest one was again words of radiance at the very, and the uh, the epilogues. The you know the, the, then mm-hmm. there's the calm after the storm, mm-hmm. where Brandon is just like oh, and one more thing, you know, <laughs> um, it's it's you know the very Steve Jobs, you know, one more thing, and he drops a bomb. For example, words of radiance, where I'm flipping through and suddenly. 
Zeth is alive and he's talking to this guy who hands him a sword, <laughs> a black sword. And suddenly I just, you just, I just read the words, would you like to destroy some evil today? And I shout and I throw the book. Was that the one where the I, was, I came out and asked what's going on? <laughs> yeah, you were in your room across the hall. I just and I just shout. read it and I just said, ah! <laughs> I think I probably squeaked or squeed or something to that effect. I wish I remembered exactly what I did, but I'm pretty because, sure I was excited. <laughs> because at that point, you know, at this point now, a lot of people ask reading order and everybody's like, oh, well, you need to read Warbreaker before you read uh, Words of Radiance or before you read Oathbringer. And I'm just like... You know, at that point, there had been no hint whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Yes, we knew about the Cosmere, but we you didn't, didn't realize know that... they were there. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I was reading a, a, a Reddit post. I read the Cosmere Reddit a lot, um, and somebody. A lot of times, people will post text conversations they have with people that they've gotten to read the books, mm-hmm. and one of them, a guy had uh, gotten his wife to read it. And she was talking about, oh, man, can you imagine if they put Zeth and Nightblood together? How <laughs> awesome that would be. And oh, he's you sitting here. straight face. Well, again, it was a text. So he, But he's just like, I'm sitting here trying not to freak out. How do I say this and not give anything away? But yeah, oh. it's just. Uh, yeah, I, I had a friend who, who was like talking about Kaladin or Shalon or Adolin. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, I'm really, I'm really hoping for Kaladin and Shalon. And I'm like. I told I told earlier about my, one of my coworkers who is just annoying because of how insightful he was when he read these books. I got him to read it, and after reading the first book, I'm just like, "So, you know, what are your thoughts? Where are you going with things?" And you know, so he's you know giving his thoughts, and one of his thoughts was, and he's like, "There's something up with that earring," and I immediately just like. <laughs> This is after book one. He's like, there's something up with that earring. And I'm just like, I'm tr- I don't know. Like, I probably failed horribly, but I think he might have bought it. Um, he's just like, and I'm like, what do you mean up with the earring? He's like, I don't know. Brandon's calling too much attention to it. Like, so he doesn't. So he's not. He's doing this just narratively. He's just noticing. He's mentioning the earring. And I'm like, I mean, it's it's the thing. Last thing her brother gave her. Like the brother, you know. It makes sense to me. I don't know. I just think there's something up with it. And I'm just like, I came home to Bill. I'm like, he's on to it. He's on to the set. What do I do? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what to do. He doesn't even know about heme allergy yet. How does he know? He knows. How does he know? Well, and the, 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 the other reason it pissed me off. I then asked him, of like, so if you like, what do you think you are just as far as a, you know, if you were a misting, he's like, I think I'd be a seeker. And this is me knowing that he's already on the earring. And I'm like, of course you would be stupid. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Stupid Dave. Oh, man. No, those epilogue bombs, they're just, I, I love the I'm, epilogue bombs. I'm trying In to remember, what happened about... when I came out after you yelled? Um... Oh, I just I just said things are happening, and you're like, "What?" Well, it's just things. Because <laughs> I I was I was far behind because I was going through the well, audio book and working, and Bill had just plowed through. <laughs> well, to the to the point where I had to like. Fortunately, you know we have breakfast. Our, a friend of ours who is uh, the spoiler of worlds. It and pisses he me loves, off how much he does not care about spoilers. He loves spoilers, and fortunately, he was. Um, like, he, I think he was in town visiting at that point, and we were driving. And I was just like, and I just finally looked over at him. I was like, "You don't mind spoilers, right?" And he's like, "I really don't. Like, just, just, just say it." <laughs> and I was just like, "Okay, I've got to talk about this." And right now, nobody I know has read this, has finished yet. So I have and, to talk. And I just explained what happened in that that one scene, and I just was, and I, you know, I, I said, you know, I was like. Would you like to destroy some evil today? And his eyebrows went up. He said, oh. <laughs> it was just sort of a... That was the one I accidentally spoiled because you got me that shirt. I, Bill got me the 8-bit uh, shirt and that Seth has and, yeah. like, blood saying to an and 8-bit Seth. Zeth, would you like to destroy some evil today? Some I made the today? mistake of of wearing that to work one day. Oh, no. And, and, Do- and Doman's like, 
oh, is, he's like, is that? And I'm like, no, no, like that's a, like this isn't a thing with that. It's a, it's, it's a different it's reference. A, and he's like, because isn't that the assassin in white? I'm like, <laughs> I can't tell you, but it's a different. Like I just straight up lie. It's a different character. Cause I have no like I have I'm like why why did I wear this shirt that was dumb of me why did I do well, yeah. this no it, it was a different character because technically Zeth died the assassin mm. in white died okay Obi Wan in your certain point of view <laughs> from but, a certain point of view <laughs> but uh, and I just straight up lied told him no it's not and then after he read uh, words of radiance he's like it was the same character I'm like what was I supposed to do he does spoilers right there spoilers yeah yeah. I just had a wonderful realization. Rhythm of War comes af- comes out after my five year old will be in, in kindergarten. So. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be great. Uh, a wizard is never you. late. He goes to kindergarten <laughs> precisely <laughs> when he needs to, because otherwise, bad bad things. Oh man! <clears throat> Except what's going to happen now is you're going to be reading and you hit the avalanche at two thirty. At <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There are after-school no, just... programs for children like this. That get <laughs> no, no, I'll just be like, you get to play Minecraft now. Uh-huh, and mommy's going to be Ah, reading. so we're going to the bad parenting <laughs> tactics. I like it. Shh. In small doses, it's fine. It's okay. Yeah. You're going to love this drink before bedtime. It's called NyQuil. You're going to love it. <laughs> Mommy, See, for me, it's time. For me, it's right before uh, Thanksgiving. I'm just like, I'm supposed to fly to, you know, to visit family for, over Thanksgiving. I'm... I'm going to lock myself away. I'm sorry. I love them, but there's an avalanche happening right now. <laughs> I'm needed no, elsewhere. No, it's going to be perfect. But you're going to be like, sorry, I'm a professional podcaster. I have I'm to doing my this. research. Trust me, this wouldn't be happening if it weren't for the fact that I was doing this. I value you so much. But this, alas, it is my job. This is for our listeners. Do you hear us, listeners? We value you. <laughs> If we do, we are if, willing look, to make these sacrifices. If we have to get yes. notes from our listeners to to hand to our parents over Thanksgiving, <laughs> a it's perfect. Note. We have a doc in chat. Doc FG, mm-hmm. perfect. Oh yeah. Oh, good times. Good times. Mm. I just the, seriously, I love the Brandon Avalanche or the Sander Lanch or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I like Sander Lanch because portmanteaus are really fun. I, I, I'm still kind of proud of Fractal Lanch. Mm, yeah, I'm t- I'm that's fun too. Somehow we can shoehorn this into somewhere. I just don't know what. Yes. Uh, any other thoughts bef- on the Avalanche before I start wrapping things up? I just, I'm just looking at the list of the different um, Cosmere and non-Cosmere books and just going, yeah, that one has one and that one has one and that one has one. And I mean, even like Rhythmatis too, I remember liking... Oh, oh yeah, that one. Forgot about Rhythmatis Avalanche. Yeah, Rhythmatis Avalanche was really good too. The um, book that was originally in the Cosmere and then removed. I still think yeah. it is. It's a lie. <laughs> Chocklings, yes. There's cl- clearly that version of Earth has uh, the the shard of geometry or something on it. Mm. Yeah. It just feels like it fits too well. Mm. Actually, it sounds like Brandon is working on potentially linking that one with the uh, Reckoners. Ooh. Wait, what? With the mul- really? With with the well, multiverse cause, cause and the if apocalypse you, with, guard. With apocalypse guard, they have different versions of Earth, or mm-hmm. things like Earth. Yeah, um, the gun. So yeah, so he could hook those Brandon's up. Brandon's now two different to make universes, two different co- parallel universes. Oh, oh my goodness! Span book series. <laughs> it's the multi multiverse. <laughs> multiverse. It's the fractal. It's the omniverse. It actually works. This is the yeah. fractal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's wow. universes all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't even Multiple make sense. realities. Realities mm-hmm. upon realities upon realities. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's brilliant. So I want to tell a short story about one of the weirdest avalanches I ever had, and that was Warbreaker. Because Bill gave me Warbreaker right before I went on a trip <laughs> to Hawaii with my family, mm-hmm. which was great. We've never been before. We're loving it. Day one, I did something wrong. With my uh, with my sunscreen, I forgot to put it on my. Or I actually put it on my feet, but we played in the sand, and I didn't realize that the sand had abrased it all off, and I had a pretty burn, bad burn. The next day, it was so bad that I couldn't walk. Like it was like I had sprained my ankles; they were so swollen. Mm. And so, the rest mm. of my family went on their trip, and as sad as I was that I was going to miss out on the rest of Hawaii, I had Warbreaker. 
And Which there is I tropical. was, alternating between reading Warbreaker, applying aloe, <laughs> then having to dry <laughs> hands off so I could then go back to reading Warbreaker because it's not my book. Mm. And then luckily I'd mm. also brought Emperor's Soul <laughs> because I still had a lot of reading to do. <laughs> but it was just one of those, it was oh, weird man. because I would have these moments of my feet are hurting, but I'm at a critical moment and I'm just sort of doing that. <laughs> Like, sort of like when you need to itch something, but you know you shouldn't itch it. Just like, mm. Get to it, Vasher! <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Things happen. All the things. All right. Well, uh, let's move on to our giveaway. Yes. Yes. Uh, as a reminder, thanks to our patrons, we are able to hold monthly giveaways. And, of course, all of our giveaways are open to everyone and free to enter. For this giveaway, just again, we have a uh, paperback copy of Arcanum Unbounded. And uh, the number for this one is 11. Okay. That is the sound of our computer that is needed to calculate a random number. (laughs) The number is three. Three is the the number. number You shall not go above or below. Four is right out. Five is right. <laughs> Five is right. Up. Five is right. Out. Three is there. And that's it's been a while directly since I watched three. it. You said three. I did three. say three. That's true. Three is. That goes to Funnyman04 on Twitter. Mm. So we will reach out to you, and uh, yeah, that will be going. And, of course, special thanks to Brandon Sanderson's online store at store.brandonsanderson.com for sending us so many awesome goodies to share with our listeners. I think this one was pretty dang cool. Yes. Our Catalog of Bounded is such an interesting book series, and I love the little, uh, I guess, sort of intros for each world written by Chris. But as cool mm. as it is, it is not the coolest thing in that it bag. It isn't, no. It's not? No, no. No, no. I, I feel that... It might be coming up on time to let mm. people know what the coolest thing in this bag is. Oh, but not, when can not, they find not, out? Just, <laughs> not just not just yet, but uh, soon. If you're really really interested in learning what the coolest thing in our, in this goodie bag is, you might want to tune into our next episode because I think uh, there there will be an announcement mm. coming up. So uh, and that's our five year anniversary. Episode. Well, that's our two-year anniversary. Oh, interesting, interesting. Mm-hmm. That's right, guys. We will have been doing this for two years Oops. when we record our next episode. How awesome is that? It's Thank crazy. you to our listeners for actually you know, <laughs> making it worthwhile for us to make this. Y'all are mm-hmm. awesome, and we're just grateful to have you. Y'all are amazing. Mm-hmm. And y'all are why we do this makes me now wish I'd made some sort of like a season finale outro for this episode. But, uh, <laughs> that'd be a lot of work. So then I do. Do, 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 Wait, no, that's the intro. Never mind. <laughs> um, now to our listeners, we'd love hearing from you. So please keep on sending in questions. Ask us about the Cosmere. Drop us your ideas for topics you want to discuss during the show. Ask us about ourselves. We're private people, but we may answer some of these things because... Yeah. You know, some there are some things we don't mind talking about. Yeah. Um, while you're at it, we would love to hear your feedback about how you think we're doing on the show, as well as any interesting theories you might have about what's going on in the Cosmere. How do you think the next avalanche is going to go down? We'll find out in November. So uh, start making some predictions. I want to hear what you think. It's going to be crazy. And just start sending those in. Uh, you can send all questions and suggestions and theories and, you know, mad scientist ideas in a short, concise email to, go, to, to, You're doing I'm, I'm just building, I'm building up the drama <laughs> to Cosmere studies at gmail.com. You didn't know I was going to say that. I probably did. And we will possibly even read your email as part of the show or just stumble through it and sound like a, an absolute moron. <laughs> now, of course we do have other personal projects that we're each working on. Jordan, where can we find your work? Uh, your choice of either twitch.tv slash splice stream or youtube.com slash splice stream would be the best places to go. Uh, we have just started season three of the Professional Amiibo League. 
Uh, it's the biggest Amiibo tournament in history. It's awesome. I made a sick intro. I'm not going to lie. I'm super proud of it. Welcome to the Amiibo anime intro. Because it's basically what it is. <laughs> um, more importantly... It, it's exactly as horrifying as you imagine. Horrifying. It's will <laughs> <laughs> be ridiculous. But uh, most importantly with that, um, XCOM, we've actually... We've been running XCOM on Friday and Saturday mornings. I know Amiibo isn't everyone's thing. So if you like watching people die in defense of the alien apocalypse and want a chance to be one of my soldiers, just come visit uh, twitch.tv slash splice stream Friday or Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. Cool, cool. And Amy, how about you? Where can we find you outside of the podcast? What do you kind of what stuff do, do you what do with? i do i do all sorts of craziness um so my facebook is coincidence cosplay and props my twitter is at coincidence cosp because my name is too long my instagram is at coincidence underscore cosplay and my website which should hopefully finally be fixed and secure and all that other jazz <clears throat> real soon is um www.coincidencecosplay.com so i just made my first d6s so that's kind of cool I'm nice. probably still going to tweak them slightly because I think they're almost too big to fit on the pieces of fabric I do. But uh-huh. I made some. I don't have pictures or they're not where I am right now. But I'm going to finally start working on doing more dice types. So awesome. we'll see where that goes. And then I will finally finish our Miss Cloaks. Finally. <sighs> awesome. So, awesome. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. As for myself, when I'm not here, I do have a bunch of board game reviews over at the Innkeeper's Table at www.innkeeperstable.com. I've actually taken the pictures of Hedgelord, so I'm prepping, hopefully, that long-promised and likely disappointing <laughs> <laughs> review just after all the hype we've, we've given it. Should Don't be oversell out it, Bill. Soon. I'm underselling it so that they'll be pleasantly surprised. Am I doing this right? <laughs> but, uh... So that should be up soon. Um, Also, I'm kind of excited about a a Kickstarter that recently arrived. Um, If you're familiar, mildly excited about this. This one? Yeah. No, the one that just recently arrived. Oh, no one arrived. Um, No, oh dang it! I'm thinking the wrong thing. Aren't I? This is a collaboration between. uh, Oh, what's this? Between Richard Garfield, the inventor of Magic: The Gathering, and. Robo Rally. <laughs> yeah, did you know that uh, Richard Garfield actually made uh, Magic the Gathering so that he could get the funds together to make Robo Rally? Uh, we have a, a friend who would say that anytime Richard Garfield was mentioned. Yeah, that joke was basically for, I think, like a total of four people, but Bill's one of them. <laughs> Uh, but it's between Richard Garfield and Ken Jennings, otherwise known as the all time Jeopardy champion. Mm. So, uh, yeah. It just arrived. It's called Half Truth, and uh, I'm kind of excited to dig into this thing. It's just one of those. When I heard that they were making a game together, I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll throw some money at this. Sure, let me yeah. just see. I want to see what well, happens. If we can get a crossover between Richard Garfield and Ken Jennings, I don't think it's too much to ask for Mike Helsier uh, and pairing with uh, a certain princess. <laughs> Wait, what? Do you mean oh, yes right now? Yeah, the she's a queen, queen now. <laughs> oh, yes, no, Kelsey. It's a, mm-hmm. it's, it's a callback to the previous episode. It was done poorly. That yes. said, one of the ones that people put in was a pairing between Wraithen and Yes, no, and I'm just like, and they said uh, calculated, faith, calculated faith meets calculated logic, and I'm just like, okay, that's an interesting thought. Anyway, mm. um, but yeah, so anyway... Back to games. I do post about games on social media, so go check those out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at at Innkeeper's Table. I actually did a bunch of posts this weekend when I was at SaltCon, which is the biggest board game convention in Utah, and it was just a lot of fun. Now, for those of you who want to support the show but can't become patrons just yet for any reason... What we'd really love is if you just let your friends know about the show. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and to like and subscribe over on youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. Any other final thoughts on the Avalanche before we take off? They're fun and stressful and wonderful. They're they're epic. If if Oathbringer is any sort of indicator of the fact that these things keep getting bigger and bigger, 
the uh-huh. rhythm of war, I hope everyone's got some sort of snow boots because we're going to well, be treading. Brandon actually <laughs> said that in Rhythm of War, he's writing one of the main scenes that he's been building towards since before oh, he ever wrote a, a... That was the other thing I wanted to say. The fact that Brandon apparently experiences his avalanches as well. Yes. As we learned right. yeah. with the most recent... With the yeah. Brandon up... Brandon, what was it? Brandon watched 2020. Brandon watched 2020. 2020. 2019. Yeah. Yeah, and like he was, he was trying to finish he it before. His own avalanche, <laughs> and he mm-hmm. stayed up like all night. And like he, his hours are usually kind of weird anyway. With when he he's asleep and when he's awake, but I mean he stayed up even later than normally would. Mm-hmm. I just yeah, love we that, learned even that Brandon, he experiences it. Even mm-hmm. Brandon falls to his own avalanche, and I love it. It's so great. Uh, now, in addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on twitch.tv slash Table every two weeks on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, listeners can also find our videos on YouTube or the audio versions of the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and just about any other service that carries podcasts by searching for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us and contact us through Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. For our next episode, we're going to take a look at an incredibly short piece of the Cosmere that's also incredibly dense. For our two-year anniversary in two weeks, we are going to be discussing the short scene titled The Traveler that Brandon shared during a reading at Jordan Con in April of 2018. This is seriously only a few paragraphs, but we'll still have a lot to talk about. Also, we will be announcing our next giveaway, and this is definitely one you're not going to want to miss. So make sure to join us live on twitch.tv slash innkeeperstable in two weeks on March 23rd, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Until then, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening, and remember, there's There's always always another another secret. secret.